We got a lot to talk about. In fact, this is an exclusive right now. That's right. Proposals for New York City area casino licenses are taking shape. Some of the possibilities include a Times Square skyscraper on Broadway, a vacant plot near the UN building, Hudson Yards, Coney Island. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Coney Island, <laughs> here to exclusively reveal the name and plans for a casino, resort, and entertainment venue on Coney Island is former city council member Robert Cornegy, who's now working on the Coney Island Casino Bed. Robin, nice to have you here on thank Good you, Day New thank York. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. So what do we need to know? First of all, what is the name of it? And uh... So I'm so excited to announce okay. that it has finally been named the Coney, because it just makes sense. Okay. Um, so we're, we're really excited. Obviously, bringing economic development and, and bringing jobs and opportunity to that portion of Brooklyn that has been so underserved is, is, a, you know, is, is an incredible component to the project. So, Robert, who's behind it? So we have some great partners in the Chickasaw Nation and Thor Equities and Saratoga. So we've got really solid partners who have a history of doing this, but this is also private land that, that's owned uh, by, by Thor Equities. Robert, I don't want to rain on the parade at all because this actually looks completely stunning, but there's a lot of critics uh, against building this here, and most of them are citing the National Association of Realtors who've studied this and studied where casinos are planted, and they say that unambiguously this affects the neighborhood around it in a negative way. What, what is your response I, to that? I, I, don't, I don't agree. It does affect the neighborhood, but it depends on how the project is, is created, yeah. what the outcomes will be. And so, um, so I'm, how is this different than this than is different casinos? because as, as former chair of housing and buildings and small business, we understand that the incorporation of MWBEs, LBEs and small businesses yeah. into the business plan up front changes the, the composition and the complexion of the community. And then what, what would that look like then? That looks like having, uh, uh, there's a similar model at the, at the Barclays, having no national brands there, all local brands represented on the, on the concourse. So mm -hmm. having local brands in the actual casino facility, number one. Number two, changing a seasonal entertainment venue into a year-round entertainment venue creates good, long-term, sustainable jobs. Mm -hmm. But having the businesses and counting on those businesses to hire from the local community is, is really the component that makes us different. Uh, is anybody going to be displaced? No, there's no displacement. There's no, there's, this, this land is currently and already an entertainment venue. If you what is it? What Coney, is it? It's, yeah. it's, it's where Coney Island exists. It's not. But so, the, when some anchor, of those little mom and pop little amusement things get displaced? No, we'd love to see them incorporated year round into the project. The, the problem with those little mom and pops is that they operate seasonal. And, I was and, about to say, yeah. I mean, and I know they're margins. open. Yeah. I know yeah. they're open, but like it, it doesn't get hopping until like the summertime it, and the it, nice exactly. weather. So yeah. that's only part time jobs. Their margins are incredibly thin. But allowing them to operate year round, we believe, will give them the boost or the shot in the arm that they they need and there are two anchor uh, entertainment venues that are family friendly mm -hmm. uh, Cyclone Stadium and the Aquarium wait you're not gonna touch Nathan's are you <laughs> Nathan's actually <laughs> has to be incorporated uh, I mean in if project. you touch Nathan's there's Robert no, there's no way you're We'd gonna love have to see Nathan's and juniors and and all of these brands that are synonymous to the borough of Brooklyn located on the site of I'm, the casino I'm telling you right now you do not want what five 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 Rosanna Stato <laughs> going up against you, but I mean, technically, it's kind of an unfair fight if you stand up. It's the height difference. All right, come Rosanna, on, Robert. Come on, real Robert fast. Hosa, um, <laughs> wow. Robert, well, you're not that much taller. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Robert, you hold a uh, world record, right? Yes, Guinness Book of World Records. I brought that to New York City, the world's tallest politician. There we go. <laughs> wow. All right, let's get back to uh, Coney Island. So you know, there's a lot of people who want to do something. Steve Cohen, mm -hmm. billionaire, City uh, city Field. Uh, there's going to be a rally there today. Some people not so much in favor of that going there. Times Square is another place they're looking at. What's your edge? My edge is the economic development piece and, and bringing a vibrant part of the city of New York into the fold. That's mm -hmm. always seemed like an extended, you know, uh, cousin, distant cousin of the city, bringing them and incorporating them into the city's footprint, making sure that there are 
long-term sustainable jobs, making sure that there are businesses who are incorporated in the project that have roots in the city of New York is what differentiates us. That economic development piece and giving vibrancy to a community that's been tremendously underserved mm -hmm. is the piece that separates us. So when, us. when do you find out the final answer of where this gets approved to and who gets this bid? Right, so the RFA project, uh, everybody submits their proposals and very shortly, hopefully, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll see that. Um, what, what does that mean? Because shortly in terms of government talk, you know, sometimes that could be yeah. a couple yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, and I don't take offense to you saying that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, I, you were in it, yeah, city yeah, council. Right? So I, don't, I don't take offense, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, there, there's a process, and I, and I don't know the outcomes okay. or, or the, Could or the be time years, frame. A couple months? No, definitely not. Definitely not years. We're, okay. we're talking about a few months. So is it true that when you submit the proposal, you got to give a check, right? There's a there's a fee and a well you have to be able to show that you can sustain a project of this size. What's that check? Size. What's the, what's the, how many zeros are I, on that I, check? I, more zeros. That's above my pay grade. More zeros than I'm than I'm familiar with seeing. Look, is sure. it true that they get they don't get the money back when they put that no. proposal in with the check? Right. In that terms of RP, in terms of RPs for the state, I know this especially when looking at Affirmation Tower. It yeah. cost them a million dollars to put that RP together. Right. Submitted it to them. They pulled the RFP. They don't get that back. Right. Well, we're hoping that the Affirmation Tower gets another uh, another bite at the apple. Quite oh, frankly. maybe we should have you speak on that. Yeah. It's yeah. been difficult to get people to talk on that, but we're talking about Coney. Yeah, now. so, okay, you're not part of the city council anymore. No. How's your life going? What's going on with life, you? Life is great, and especially with a project like this, I get to live my family's mission, which is to build economic development and build sustainable business in communities that were coming underserved. That was my that was my role. I was the yeah. former chair of small business mm -hmm. and the former chair of housing and buildings. So I get to not very often do you get to do what your uh, mission and passion is outside of government. I held those seats because people believe that I was uh, qualified huh. uh, to do that not only for my community which was Bedford Stuyvesant community but for the entire city and now I get to uh, you know to go back and do that again outside of government is amazing. All right so Robert if people want to get more information on the Coney Island proposal is there a website we can go to? There is a website I would have to look at my phone to, to, give, to give it unless you have it with uh, you. Yes. Okay. RevitalizeConey.com. Yes, exactly. Very very simple and and that's that's the undertone is like we want to revitalize Coney Island. Coney Island um, uh, you as a, as, as a Brooklyn person um, Coney Island was the place that myself and my family went to actually get a taste of the rest of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. right? Because you're yeah. kind of insulated. Right. Brooklyn is a little bit insulated yeah. in terms of its communities. When we went to Coney Island, we got to see folks from Bay Ridge and Bensonhurst and, and places that ordinarily we didn't. We want to see that happen again. And we got okay. to have Nathan's. I was going to say, just to don't to Nathan's, touch Nathan's. Nathan's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm working on my beach body, so every time you say Nathan's, I'm, 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 you know. French fries. French fries. They, they're French fries. Uh -huh. <laughs> the crinkle cut French fries, French fries right? If you're, if, you're, if you're from New York or you're a Brooklynite, you know that those <laughs> crinkle cut French fries at Nathan's. Wow. Uh, sometimes drizzled with a little cheese. There we uh, go. Uh, makes it amazing. We like that. Well, thank you so right, much for Robert, being here. You may have an edge up in my mind right now. <laughs> thank <laughs> thank you, so you so much for coming thank on you, and sharing details.